Welcome to our channel. My name is Angelo from the T-Squad family and today we are doing a special project. We are exchanging our water heater. Why are we doing that? Why? It works perfectly fine, but for those of you who love your showers while you RV, I am tired of running out of hot water. So I have a on-demand hot water tank at my house. So I got so used to it. So every time we go camping or RVing, we run out of hot water and everybody has to wait like 45 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half to so they could take a shower. So today I made a decision to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna have everything right here in this spot to tell you what you need to use to put your hot water tank, your tankless. Now, a few things you wanna remember is power needs to be off, water needs to be drained, hot water tank needs to be drained and you make sure no power is going to the RV and by that, Let's get started. All right, so before we get started, I wanna talk about this current water heater we have. On electric, this water heater will heat up 6.2 gallons per hour. That's a long time, especially when you have four other people wanting to take a shower. But if you're using gas, it's a little bit more. It's like 11.6 gallons per hour, which means it's a six gallon tank. So you would have to run out and fill up and run out again. But anyways, long story short, the minimum is 6.2 gallons per hour. So in other words, this water heater would take one hour to heat up once Angelo, notice how I don't blame Sandy for this one. Once Angelo uh, heats, uh, takes a shower and heats up the water back up, you got one hour before you can use it again. So I bought a Rec Pro, okay? I bought a Rec Pro. I bought a Rec Pro, it's called REC Pro. And what came was a Fregatti. I'm certain what a Fregatti is. It's one of the best water heaters you can buy. And I was very shocked because I did not want to spend too much money on a water heater. So that's why I went with the Rec Pro. And by the way, you will see a link in the description below. Click on that link. It'll send you right to the Rec Pro that I purchased. You can either choose a white panel or a black panel. Now that being said, this Fregatti right here came in a Rec Pro box. So that means Fregatti makes Rec Pro, which is excellent. I was so excited to see a Fregatti box come from Rec Pro or Rec Pro come from Fregatti. You get the point. Okay, so if you notice the Fregatti, it is a gas water heater for RV, of course, because you don't want to use a house one. The capacity is 42,000 BTU, which is great. Your RP, your LP can handle this. Six liters per minute. Six liters equals 1.58 gallons a minute. This is awesome. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and unbox the Fregatti uh, RV water heater, and then we're gonna go ahead and go over everything you need to assemble and to put together before you put it in the RV. Let's take this out of the box. It's not too heavy. Sometimes it's easier just to grab it by the plastic, pull it out, and there we go. Yeah, oh yes. It does come with a package of tool of stuff that's we'll go over that in a second. This is what we're looking at. And let's go over everything that needs to be connected back here. And a few things to you what we need to remember and what we need to do. So you do have your hot water outlet. This is where your hot water will come out of to go in your RV. You have your water inlet. This is where your water is going to come from your fresh water tank or your water source to go inside the water heater so it can come out of here. So looking down here, this is where your propane or LP is going to be connected. And then these are your 12 volt wires. One is for your 12 volt and the other one is for your remote control. And it's, uh, I'm sorry, your remote, your wire controller, which is your temperature gauge and everything. So all that, now let's talk about everything here that's on this table right here. Yes, it does seem like a lot of stuff here. So we're gonna go through this step by step you need this is the number one thing you would need is a pressure gauge or i'm sorry an automatic reseeding pressure temperature release valve for your water heater currently you have one in your water tank right here it may look like that it's facing this way some are facing down and it's right there in your current water 
heater. This one, unfortunately, doesn't have one. The outside definitely doesn't have one here either. So that's why it's important you put a pressure relief valve on this side right here. And this is the number one problem people run through when they do something like this. By the way, disclosure, I am in no way whatsoever a mechanic, an RV technician, so do this at your own risk. I just know I am in the field of construction, so I'm able to do simple things like this. Well, to me it's simple, and I'm trying to make them simple for you too. We are going to get a three-way and this is a half inch, by the way. You will need one three-way half inch, the long way versus the short way. Simply just do it this way and you will avoid the extra step that you have to do. And that's pretty tight. I can go a little tighter. And then you put your five inch nipple on like this. And then you put your relief pressure valve in there after your three quarter inch reducer from a half inch three quarter inch reduced to half inch and that's it then you'll push it all the way down it'll be facing that way right here but we are not done we're going to take it apart and do teflon but for now i want to keep moving here this is your hot your cold water inlet anything going through here will go through the hot water tank so i don't think this is a check valve simply a check valve is anything that goes in will not come out so I will end up putting a check valve on this, just like that. See that it has an arrow. Okay, you must follow the arrow. This is only for inlet. So if you see that arrow, and you see how it says inlet, inlet means water in, and there's the arrow, make sure you follow the pattern. Screw it in like that. Now see that little white thing? That allows the water go in, but doesn't allow the water go back out, because what goes in, I don't want it to come back out. And then we move on to the next step. I will have everything that you see here that you will need for this water tank down in the description. And everything will have a link. So you'll know where everything goes, everything. Anytime you put Teflon on your pipes here, you want to always put it on clockwise because, well, I guess you want to put it on the, de the way and just get rid of that piece there. You want to put it on the way you are screwing your part in so this way it does not fall off. I'm going to put it on this way. Okay, and I'm going to go clockwise. Let's do it. Making sure no Teflon is in. You're probably going to have to hold a piece until you can get started. Just like this. Just like that. I am started. I am going clockwise. I've seen so many people do this the wrong way because they were putting it on counterclockwise. And when they were putting it on, they actually took it off as they're screwing it on. So we're going to say that would be good enough for that right there. Now, as we turn, this will not come off. We're going to use our half inch T that we're going to go ahead and screw on here. Tighten it. I want to make sure that it's got a nice turn. And if you look, that Teflon's not even coming off. It is doing its job. I'm going to do it again. Now, you gotta remember that you want this nice and tight, so I'm going to make it so I can turn it that way, or at least down at an angle a little bit. My own tools, so you use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to bring it down right about there, and that's as tight as I want that. I had to force that thing. I might even have to go a little lower. So let's go ahead and put on the next part. Remember this, has to be Teflon too. So we will, since we're screwing, we're putting it in this way, turning clockwise. We wanna make sure that we are clockwising, if that's a word. Put it in like this. It's gonna be a little tough doing it because it's got the Teflon that you got up. Okay, good. I'm gonna take my pliers here and just turn it. So I feel comfortable it's tight enough. So now what we'll do is we'll take our three quarter inch to half inch and we'll make sure that that washer's in there, okay? Push that washer in there like that. And then we'll take this and we'll put it on like that. You know, this morning it was 50 something degrees. Now it's like 68 degrees, burning my back. Okay, we don't, we just wanna make sure this is on nice and clean. So if you need to redo it, redo it. Like that. 
See how I got that going on like that? And what you need, because everything is down in the link below, I'm going to tighten this. You guys may have some different tools. I'm gonna use what I have, and it works. All right, so now that we got the Teflon on here, guys, I literally had to run inside to do this because it was so windy. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in like that. And just screw it in nice and neat. Okay. A lot of people, I'm gonna hear it. I know, you're scratching the brass. I know, okay? I know. Good. Okay, so it's almost down. I'm gonna do a little bit more turn. We got the five inch nipple. We got the reducer, three quarter inch reducer to a half inch. And we got this T. We're good to go. Now, this right here is your backflow. I'm going to go ahead and Teflon that right there and put this on. This way we're all set. Arrow is straight. You should not have a problem with that because it only goes in one way. I will tell you that you there is a there is a manual here. Yes, I did read the manual. I mean, like I said, this is pretty much anything that I show you here, you will have with a link down below. I keep saying it because when I got the Fregati, I thought they had everything in like everything in a package. They had nothing. It had nothing that you see that was all these parts here. So anything that you see that I connected right here all going to be down there in the description with a link to tells you tell you what is what all right so this is my propane line right here i just unloosened it and we'll just take it and just as much as we can you might smell some propane like i said it's okay just don't smoke around it and there it is so that actually that part right there hopefully it fits that right there which looks like it's the same exact one the good thing is they try to match what's on your current rv to the new one so we're just going to take that just leave it right there we're going to unscrew all these screws here remember just unscrew the ones that are both that are screwed into your rv so this is the inside of my rv and if you can see that you got to make sure that everything is detached from the rv the water lines will give you enough water. I detached this one already. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. So I have no choice but to cut the cold water intake. I don't want to, but I have to. And by the way, I will have this tool to cut pipes in the description down below as well. So I had no choice but to cut the cold water. I didn't want to, but I had to. Cut all the caulk or all the silicone all the way around here. We'll cut it with a knife like that. Loosen it up a little bit so we can pull it out. Make sure that you mark your wires too because I see some wires. Yeah. Boy, this is lighter than I thought it would be. So you'll notice there's some wires here. This is your 12 volt. This is the 12 volt that's coming into this. This is all the new system requires. And if you look at your template here, it'll say what these wires are. If you're unsure what these wires are, make sure you take a picture and you follow the diagram that is actually in the pamphlet that comes with the directions. So I like to keep everything that, that I buy. So I'm just gonna put this back in the box of the old water heater and just keep it just in case something happens I will have it I mean obviously I won't have it on the road but I'll definitely have it if I ever need the old water heater it just started raining actually as soon as I finished that last part I knew something was coming through it started raining probably 10 minutes after I finished that last part even though it looked nice and uh, so I wrapped everything up I put everything away and I threw the old, the old uh, uh, water heater inside here and I sealed it up a little bit so it doesn't get wet inside. But uh, we are back. It is still raining. Look at those clouds. 
on your pipe, you want to make sure you use the correct clamp. Now, I'm going to turn the camera and I'm going to show you what these clamps look like. And these clamps are from the factory. Okay, yes, they do have half inch pecs, which I like. And what happens here is they are using this kind of clamp versus this little clamp right here. So these right here, these tools, this tool right here is for the clamps to use this one and not this one if you see the difference. So you'll have to go out and get one of these tools that have this little opening here. Don't confuse it with this one where it opens up all the way like this and then you put your clamp in the middle around your pipe like that and then you'll squeeze the two handles to tighten it. So I'm gonna be using these right here, the smaller ones, because that's what I like to use. And um, we're gonna go ahead and put the fittings on the cold water. And then the hot water already has one, so we're gonna leave that one on and just go ahead and put it on the cold water. All right, so I do have the clamp on this one. This one has already been on, I didn't touch it. So I'm going to set this aside and we are going to push it in. And you'll notice that there's a space right here. That's where the new cover will come in because the old cover, well, the cover that came with the uh, unit is too, or the uh, new water heater is too small. So I had the special, I shouldn't say special order, but I had to order separate the cover to fit my opening. So make sure you go ahead and measure before ordering it. This way you're not waiting like me because it is coming tomorrow and I'm about done here. It's really light too. Just wedge it in there a little bit. Come on. There we go. There we go. Yes, yes. And that's where it's going to sit, right there. So this is the view from the back of it where I just pushed it through that opening right there. And you can see how easy this is going to be to connect to my cold. And then my hot will go right there. And my propane, which is right here, hook up, will go right there. I know those wires are in the way, but it'll go right there. Now I'll take all my 12 volt wires, connect them as needed. All right, this is how it looks right there. You see this opening right here? You're ready to install this door if your opening is good. This door does come with the unit, so you don't have to buy anything special. Now, remember, if your opening is larger, you need to get a larger door. So that being said, I am not gonna install this because my new door is coming tomorrow. All right, we're done with this for now. We're gonna wait for our cover, and we're gonna finish this up. Finally, it has stopped raining. I can't tell you how many times I've been in and out, in and out covering this because of the rain. Now we have clear skies and now we will complete this job. Now I want to note that uh, I had to order the door that comes with this unit. It comes with a door, but it is not the correct size. So when you purchase your unit, you make sure you measure your opening from here to here and uh, you, you buy the correct door for that. This door came with the unit and you can see the the difference there. I'll put it on this side so you can see. It goes right there. There's a little opening right here. So what I had to do, do is I had to purchase a different size door and I will go over the size real quick and you can see the difference in the size by just putting them up and it's exactly what I needed to fit right here. Did you see that? It just covers it right up. So this is the correct size door. I'll have everything in the link in the description below. So check it out. Um, like I said, I think I paid 69, 79 bucks for this door, but I can always sell that one if I need to. So this is the sticky putty. They call it sticky putty. It's like, it's like a, um, I'll show you here. It's like a sticky putty. And this right here is going to go around the edge of that door frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's nice and sealed. So this way when I screw it into the wall, uh, it'll like push it and it'll block any water from going. This is very important. This is different than silicone. And I'll just cut any access that I don't need. I 
it nice and neat. And I do, I got enough, good. So if you notice, I put it all the way around, all the way down the hinge side, all the way this way and down. And it's kind of sticky. And I followed the perforated uh, uh, line there, the indent. All right, let's go ahead and put this in. Look how, okay, we're ready. All right, I am gonna go on the inside of the flange, not the outside. I might have to push it down and get it in there like that. Okay, we're good there. Work our way around it. All right, so we're all set. I did end up screwing all this in and I put a screws here, put a couple up here. And what you're gonna notice is I duct taped this rubber seal so this way it doesn't slide up and down because it is adjustable. So I adjusted it to the height of the exhaust and now it just closes just like that. All right, so now we are in my bathroom here and this right here, I will take this protective film plate off and I'm going to mount it right there one small one on the side there yep put it on the hinge my light is flashing and i'm going to snap it right back in place like that so now i'm going to go ahead and turn the power on and what you'll see here once i turn the power on you'll see i'll take this sticky uh this film off after but once i turn the power on you'll see that it'll glow start glowing and show you the leds Out of town, we're going to go ahead and check the water heater because it is trying to turn on. Making sure there's water in, in, in here. So I just turned the pump on. It's full of water. I just heard it fill up. It stopped. Making sure this is on. Easy way for me to bleed the hot water tank because there's no gas, there was no propane, is to turn your stove on for a couple of seconds. And now you know that it's got gas all the way to here. So you know the water heater has gas. We'll turn that off and make sure it's off. All set, now let's go back out to the water heater. We'll try it out. After making sure there's no leaks, you connected everything. We wanna make sure no leaks because once you're on the road, yeah, you know what's gonna happen. So, making sure no leaks, I did that. Let's go into the bathroom. Remember that switch that we just hooked up? I forgot to turn that on because this wasn't working originally. So let's go turn that on and see what happens. Okay, let's get close here. This is it. So what you'll do is you'll press power It'll turn on. Right now, it's 55 degrees, the water. Okay, that's what the temperature is in the tank. So that means that water was cold. So you can see these two dials here. We're gonna go up. Oh, it's already set to 123. So if we wanna go down, my house is set to 120. So we're gonna leave it at 120. This right here is to switch it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And then this is your uh, Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna move it up to 123. Is that the max? That is the max. It's my outside spigot because I do have hot water. So let's see, I'm gonna turn it on with one hand here and let's see what happens to the water tank. There it goes. It's on, I can feel right here, just I'm not gonna stay in front of it. I can feel it, still cold. Now remember it's going all through the pipes right now in that tank whatever's in those little coils. Oh, I feel it. Oh, wow. That is, that is hot. Okay, I, that is nice. That's 123 degrees right there. Now, a few mistakes I made. I forgot to turn that on switch. Wow, that is sweet. I love it. All right, so once I turn the water on, it's still running, and now the fan turns on. Yeah, the fan's gonna run for like 10 seconds. Don't count me to it. And it's off. If I was to turn this, the faucet back on, the blower would kick in. It would take a few seconds to get the hot water, but you can literally go and go take a shower and not worry about running out of hot water again. Well, hey, I am no professional, but I did this. 
you can do this. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to try to answer them. Like I said, we're doing this together. I've learned as I went along. Shut that door. Nice. We're good. Hey, we did it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the section below. In the meantime, have a great camping season. You'll never run out of hot water now. I will put a review. I will actually do this in six months to tell you how it is, or if I run into any problems, you'll get a video uh, after this because we are going to Florida and we are going to utilize this. Just a reminder, if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, go a step further. Hit that bell and you'll get notified for videos like this. I appreciate everybody. Thank you and have a great camping season. We'll see you guys in the next video.